Good morning. Today we have got something a bit different for you. Today we have set ourselves a bit of a challenge. There are three bridges across the River Forth between Edinburgh and Fife, and we got to thinking how quickly could you get across all three. So here's the plan. First of all, we're going to drive across the Queensferry Crossing to South Queensferry. Then we're going to run across the Forth Road Bridge until we get to Inverkeething Station, and we're taking the long way. And then we're getting the train from Inverkeething across the Forth Rail Bridge back to Dalmeny. Then we're running down the hill to South Queensferry, Mabel, and very probably a cup of coffee. And why Queensferry? Well, for that, what we need is a wee bit of history. So why is this pretty little place called Queensferry? Well, that dates back about a thousand years to when Queen Margaret, now Saint Margaret, set up a pilgrimage route that went from Edinburgh up to St Andrews and they needed a way to get across the River Forth. So she established a ferry from South Queensferry over there to North Queensferry and that's why to this day this place is called the Queen's Ferry. And back over in South Queensferry, that natural rock formation sticking out there is called the Binks and it is reputed to be where the original terminal for Queen Margaret's Ferry at South Queensferry was. Much later on, proper piers and jetties were built at both sides of the Forth, but there you are, that is where it all started, that is the Binks at South Queensferry, that were in use from 1058 thereabouts up until the 1800s, when new jetties and new piers were built as the Industrial Revolution started to really take off. As of crossing, this has been in use for at least a thousand years. I mean, there was 800 years of uh, the Queen's Ferry, and before that there would have been other ferries, and obviously now we have a nice collection of bridges. So this is a crossing point that's been in use for an awfully, awfully long time. So there is the most recent addition to our bridge collection between Fife and Edinburgh, that is the Queensferry Crossing. It's a shame they had a naming competition for that and there was all sorts of clever names like St Margaret's Bridge and the name they came up with in the end was the Queensferry Crossing which shows a startling lack of imagination. Although the Queen in Queensferry is Queen Margaret, later St Margaret, so I suppose in a way it is named after her. In front of us is the first bridge or a three bridges challenge so uh, let's get ready and three, two, one. One, and the first thing that happens is we have to stop because there's lots of traffic. The Queensferry Crossing opened in 2017 and it's the longest three-tower cable stayed suspension bridge in the world, apparently. The bridge is certainly an impressive structure and they boasted that it would never be closed owing to the weather. That was until it got icy and then the ice started falling off, so guess what? They closed it. And that is the first bridge of our Three Bridges Challenge done. Now we're going to take the junction, head down into South Queensferry, park the van, and then we're going to go and run across the Fourth Road Bridge, which is going to be uh, our least favourite crossing of the three. And we are off on a narrow path, trying to make this look interesting, running up a big hill to the Fourth Road Bridge, which is uh, over there. So there it is, up there. I promised Bex this bit was flat. I forgot about that hill. <laughs> Oops. I know the Fourth Road Bridge isn't flat. It's uphill all the way to the middle. Yeah, but then it's downhill all the way to the other side. You don't notice the downhill though. No, you don't. Oh, and we'll be using the west cycle path. Oh, uh, unless you believe that sign there, in which case we'll be using the east cycle path. Uh, don't know. And Bex is off somewhere up ahead. The Fourth Road Bridge was opened in 1964 and at the time it was one of the longest suspension bridges in the world and a vital artery between the south of Scotland and the north, which meant it was a bit of a problem when they found out that the main suspension cables were starting to corrode and uh, couldn't be replaced. So this is the start of uh, what is quite a big hill and goes on for quite a long way and most annoyingly you can see the top from the bottom. So when we get around this corner I'll show you what we're now going to run up, which is much less fun than the bit that you run down. This is going to be actually uh, not as easy to do as I thought. Not because of the running, because trying to talk and run at the same time. I'm just going to get more and more out of path. But in front of you, you see Fourth Road Bridge, Fourth Rail Bridge, Queensferry Crossing. That's quite pretty, isn't it? And uh, so's the bridge. Blue skies and sunshine over there. 
not quite so blue and sunny over there. And this is the cables here that hold the bridge up. And they're the reason that it's closed to most traffic because they are corroding and uh, getting weaker, which as you can imagine, is a bit of a problem. There's lots of strands of wire inside that, obviously it's rope wires. And the way that they know how they're behaving is they've got microphones set up. So if a wire snaps, it goes ding, and they hear the ting, so they know how many wires are snapping. That's not a problem that the new bridge has because it's a more modern design, those cables can all be replaced, whereas these ones cannot. As well as looking very pretty, the River Forth is a major waterway. There's a big shipyard just upstream at Resyth, and beyond that there's a massive petrochemical plant at Grangemouth, so there's always traffic coming and going. I'm just gratuitously stopping, allegedly, to film bits of bridges, really because I'm uh, quite out of breath. And there's Bex who's having to wait for me. And she won't admit that she was looking forward to a wee stop as well. And we could have done this by bus instead of running, and it would have been the same three bridges challenge without um, all the running. But we love running, we do. You can tell, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, she loves it when we get the cup of coffee at the end. We're just approaching our favourite bit of the run, because if you look at where the suspension cable thing is coming down, that lowest point is the highest point on the bridge. And from there, it is downhill all the way. I love these wee security cameras that always look like they've got their head in their hands. It's like, why are you so depressed? It is possible to walk up that uh, big suspension cable there. Uh, people sometimes do it for charity. We've never done it, but one day we might, if we're feeling really, really brave. The Queensferry Crossing got quite a hard time for not being a very inspired design, unlike the other two bridges here. But I think it looks quite nice. I think that's quite uh, majestic and impressive and stuff. And down there is North Queensferry. So that is South Queensferry over there and North Queensferry over here. The two places where Queen Margaret had a wee boat to take the pilgrims to Dunfermline and then on to St Andrews. So there you are. Pretty wee hussies, pretty wee boats, a pretty wee harbour and a pretty impressive bridge. So old Queen Elizabeth and her husband crossed this bridge in 1964 and it replaced the Queen's Ferry Passage, which was Queen Margaret's little ferry that went backwards and forwards, that was suspended after 800 years. That ferry ran for 800 years before it was replaced with that bridge. And now we've got to go down quite a lot of stairs. I did once try to run down these stairs when I was doing a 10k. It did not go entirely well, as you can probably imagine. So there's a nice artistic view of the fourth road bridge from underneath. Uh, Queen's Ferry Crossing, fourth road bridge for rail bridge. You getting the hang of this yet? So that has had millions and millions of vehicles going over it. Now it's all pedestrians and buses and uh, mad cyclists who go far too fast, but uh, hey ho. But over there is the bottom end of the suspension cables. That is where they are anchored into the ground. And in case you didn't believe us, we are on another little part of the Fife Coastal Path between here and the railway station at Inverkeithing. Well, we did an easy bit driving over the Queensferry Crossing and then the uh, much less easy bit running back across that great big bridge there. Next step is uh, the train across this one. How cute is this little lighthouse? It's the smallest Stevenson light tower in the world. That's uh, quite impressive. You can get into that. We're going to come back one day when we've got a bit more time and don't have a train to catch. That's another not bad wee view. We do like uh, the Queensferries, both of them. Very different, but both very nice. So we're making a brief stop off in North Queensferry for this rather nice memorial here, which is uh, made out of metal. And this is a memorial to the men that died building uh, that. And there's yet another view of the fourth rail bridge. Uh, <laughs> it's got a train going over it, so you probably can't hear me, but uh, that's the fourth rail bridge from very, very below. Ah, there's a wee picture of the bridge being built. That's, uh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? It shows all the, the cranes and all the machinery. I wonder how they got to their work. They must have <laughs> had to climb up here to get up to there. Ah, they just don't build things like they used to. That one was built in the 1800s and it's still going strong. The fourth road bridge was built in the 1960s and uh, it, can't, uh, it can't take the weight of the traffic because the cables are corroding. And that little island out there is called Inchgarvie and that's got an old fort on it, World War I defences out there to stop submarines getting in to attack Resyth Dockyard that's just up there. And out there, 
there's a rather swanky looking cruise ship who have uh, docked with uh, great views of the bridge. You do stand here and wonder how complicated the plans to build this thing actually were. I mean, all the bits would have been fabricated off site and then brought in. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a massive mechanical set. Everything's bolted together and everything uh, fits. It's really quite interesting and a very impressive feat of engineering, as we may have mentioned before. I was standing over there doing my wee talkie bit there. <laughs> I've just noticed there's a fisherman down there who must have heard every word that I said. I wonder what he thought of the lunatic talking to himself. <laughs> More prettiness on the Fife Coastal Path as we go under the fourth rail bridge, which hopefully will soon be going over if we catch our train. Uh, sorry Bex, this hill might be a teeny, teeny bit up. There's quite a lot of work going into this path. It's all recycled stones and bricks. It's, uh, that's rather cool. So we're going along the coastal path further into Curling Nose Point, which is a wildlife reserve, as you can all read it by yourselves. Although it is a bit of an industrial wasteland round here, that is a very nice beach. And if you look out there, there's two little sailing boats that aren't actually sailing, I think they might be a bit stuck. Bex reckons they're actually having a sailing lesson and I'm just being unkind and from here they have actually started moving so uh, I do apologise. Actually I don't apologise at all, I thought it was funny. We do both quite like the sea, maybe one day we'll buy a boat. Who else remembers the days when industrial buildings were quite impressive and not just the prefabricated tin sheds that we get these days? I mean that is a really smart brick and sandstone building that one, I'm guessing it was once part of the dock. This keeps happening, I keep stopping to film things, I look up and Bex is gone, but fortunately I can do this. <laughs> the old mills and warehouses that were once part of a vibrant docks now lie derelict and boarded up, apart from the odd little bit of industry. Hopefully one day they'll get put back into use, probably as flats to be fair, that seems to be the fate that befalls most of them. You better get a picture of the same. Why? It's not that sign, that one over there. Oh, right, okay. There you are. We are in Inverkeithing, which is where the railway station is. But unfortunately, the railway station is up a big hill at the far end of town. A few years ago, Inverkeithing was rather grim. And to be fair, bits of it are still rather grim, but a lot of it is really, really improving. There's some nice houses and a lot of money getting spent on making the place a bit more pleasant. And after running up that big hill, there's a sign we were both very happy to see. We were at the railway station. Yay! If you're of a cycling persuasion, you can actually take your bike on the train, which will get you to Inverkeithing when you can drop yourself onto the Millennium Cycle National Network 1, which takes you north to Aberdeen or south to Edinburgh. So we've made it to the railway station on time and we're just waiting for the train to come and take us back over the fourth rail bridge. We do have a lot of happy experience of ScotRail if you remember our uh, Inverness video, but let's give it a shot. We're on the Juju train and uh, we've got a seat this time which is unusual for us on ScotRail. for post run refreshments with our local national drink, Iron Brew. Yeah, she did say local and national in the same sentence. Oh, what do you want to say? National. Time for some post run refreshments with our national drink, Iron Brew. Which is also available locally. And if anybody from Iron Brew is watching, yeah, we are available for sponsorship. I would rather somebody from Bollinger was watching. So there is the queue of traffic for the uh, Coonsbury Crossing. There's always a queue of traffic there. But there is the River Forth and we're about to start on the crossing of the Forth Rail Bridge, which I'm looking forward to. Because uh, I can drive, I've not been on the train across the Forth Bridge for uh, years and years. In fact, I do remember when I was a kid and if you got the train over the Forth Bridge, it was an adventure. Because once you got into Fife, you were... <laughs> You were abroad, you were actually technically overseas. Yeah, do not adjust your set, we're going through a tunnel. We are now approaching North Queensbury. Please mind the gap when alighting from this train. Blue skies and uh, sunshine. This should be quite nice. The fourth rail bridge was opened in 1890, but before that there was a railway service between the south of Scotland and the north, because what you do is get the train to South Queensferry, get on the ferry, and then get off the ferry and back on a different train on this side. And even after that bridge was built, road traffic cars still came across by ferry. Yay, and we are on the bridge. There is the fourth road bridge and the Queensferry crossing over there. Uh, we're about to see the big uh, metal bits on this bridge. Now, it used to be that this bridge was getting constantly painted because they got to one end and then had to go back and start again. So there's an expression over here 
it's like painting the fourth bridge for something that never ever ends. Now that's no longer true because they made some high tech coating that means they don't have to keep doing it. But uh, it's still, if somebody says to you it's like painting the fourth bridge, it means it's a thankless task that never ever ends. They are a wee bit of, uh, of something. That little boat down there is a little ferry that goes from South Queensferry and takes you out to a monastery that's in the Firth of Forth. We're going to go and visit that one day and you guys are obviously coming with us. That is quite a nice view, isn't it? It's looking back up the River Forth. This bridge is just seared into the Scottish consciousness. It's, it is probably our ultimate icon. This bridge, possibly Edinburgh Castle, I can't think of anything else in Scotland that is uh, as famous. Well, Possibly the Loch Ness Monster and one day maybe Mabel. Now we've seen this from another angle when we were at Bowness. If you look at our Bowness video you see the three bridges. But I'm going to come back with the drone and uh, try and get some proper RT bridge film for you good people. We are at Dalmany and people are looking at me. <laughs> So that was an epic railway journey of which Stevie Marsh himself would be proud. That was all the way from Inverkeithing to Dalmeny. Right, I've suppressed my inner train spotter and now we're running back down towards Mabel in South Queensferry. But we had to stop because look at that cracking view out over the rooftops of the village. We will have to come back here for a better look. What? What sort of flat and brown with red legs and a red spot? I don't know. Uh, neither do I, but there's one uh, on your shoulder. <laughs> it's flown away. Yeah, uh, Bex is now uh, not talking to me because I, uh, yeah, I, th well, I saw that bug and I thought it would make for excellent content. <laughs> she just thought it was a big scary bug and, uh, well, <laughs> she was kind of right. I'm not, I'm not scared of bugs, it's just that you've stopped to film it rather than just taking it off my neck. Thanks. Content. Well, Bex has just found the Venal Burial Ground. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that looks Yep, that's something for another day. We'll come back to South Queensferry and we'll do a South Queensferry Explore. That is really quite impressive though. That first gravestone, 1837, so that's quite an old graveyard. There you go, I call this one uh, Bex Bunting and a Bridge. There, that's my, uh, my artistic uh, endeavours for the day. Bex Bunting and a Bridge. South Queensferry is a very nice wee place. We're definitely coming back here for a proper explore. What we'll probably do is South Queensferry and uh, North Queensferry because it's just over there. Yeah, I'll never get bored of looking at that bridge or actually uh, those bridges over there or that seagull. This is a place that is not boring. And back at South Queensferry Harbour, that's our adventure done. I'd just like to take a little break here to say a thank you to everyone who supports us on Ko-fi and Patreon. It really does mean the world to us. And if you'd like to put a few pounds our way to help us with our little adventures, then the links will be at the end of this video. And anything that anybody gives us all goes towards buying new gear to get better videos. We don't spend it on anything frivolous. Uh, apart from De Niro, who spends his Ko-fi money on biscuits. And over there are those two little sailboats that we saw at Inverkeithing. They're uh, out in deep water now, and the little motorboat over there is looking after them to keep them safe. I'm guessing they are uh, just out for a wee practice, a wee uh, coaching session with a guy in the motorboat. That is a happy face because that is a chocolate and a raspberry scone which is still warm and that is a coffee, that is my coffee. It's been a really good wee adventure today, I've quite enjoyed it apart from all the running which I just enjoyed as opposed to quite enjoyed. And that's our wee adventure done. We've been across all three bridges and we uh, made it in time for the train. Although we're not telling you what train we were aiming for, just in case we missed that one and had to catch a later one. Anyway, we have done it now. You've seen all three of the bridges. And uh, as always, thank you very much for joining us on this little journey. And if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and all that gubbins. And now you can say, and we'll see you soon for more Scotland on a shoestring. And we'll see you soon for more Scotland on a shoestring. Look at that. She's unnatural. De Niro's not sure, there's lots of uh, new friends up there. Look at that, they're all colour coordinated too. It's <laughs> all the shades of beige.